<laughs> I'm leaving. Goodbye, Mowgli Manuel Herrera. Not goodbye forever. You're not leaving forever. It's not the last time we'll ever see you again, but goodbye for now. And we wanted to make this video to celebrate, commemorate, and say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being the amazing, incredible individual that you are and being the author of your own story and for writing a chapter of that story in that book for Braille skateboarding and for me. It's been an incredible journey that we've been on. So let's take it from the beginning and look at some of the amazing, incredible times that we've had together and just celebrate the awesome times that we've been through. The very first time that I learned about Mowgli, aka Jungle Book on Instagram, is when I reached out to my friend Nigel Alexander and I said, do you know anybody who would just have an absolute blast coming up and skating with us? And he said, yeah, I know this dude, super talented, really hard worker, super awesome. His name is Mowgli. And I was like, Mowgli? Like from Jungle Book? Yeah. So NK sent me this clip and I believe the first clip I ever saw was on a bump to bar and it was a tray flip to front feeble. And I was like, what in the world? This is like one of the most insane tricks. Um, it takes a really, really highly dedicated, highly skilled level of individual to be able to do a tray flip front feeble. And it's not just one of those things that you learn overnight. So I, I knew instantly, okay, there's something different about this dude. He's dedicated, he's awesome, he's excited. And then um, he comes to the warehouse. And when I met him for the first time, I remember he was in the back and he was drinking this giant thing of coffee. And I was like, hey bro, how you doing? Uh, welcome. It was the first time I met him. And I think it, the conversation went something like, hey, I got you some, some eggs. And he was like, no, bro, I don't eat that, I'm vegan. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, I feel so bad. And he's like, nah, don't worry about it. Let's just skate. And then we just skated. And that's kind of like, that's kind of the mantra Mowgli. He is one of the hardest working people I've ever, ever met. He would literally wake up at five or 6 a.m., go street skate, come back to Braille, film a full day of videos, in that full day of videos and then go street skate again, constantly working on something, constantly working on improving himself. And you know, these, these mantras, the things that you learn from Mowgli, be the author of your own story, be your own individual, which I completely, absolutely love. And um, the thing that, I, thing that I love the most is he just, he's just such a raw skateboarder. He just embodies skateboarding. And I think that really came out in his skateboarding I think that really comes out in the videos that he was in and, and how he pushed himself. One of my favorite Mowgli moments, there, there are so many, but one of my favorite Mowgli moments was when we did this video, worst haircut ever skateboarding challenge. And so in the video, we challenged Mowgli to do 50 tricks on a flat bar and I gave him 15 minutes. So in under 15 minutes, he had to do 50 tricks. And if he didn't land it, I would get to cut his hair into whatever like crazy situation that I wanted. And he did it. He landed at all 50 tricks. He literally ended with a first try tray flip lip. And he had one minute, like one minute, 30 seconds to go or something like that, which is completely insane. To imagine doing 50 tricks even on flat ground in what is that, 13 and a half minutes is not the easiest thing. But to do 50 tricks on a bump to bar, which you have to go up on the ramp, you have to drop in, you have to get speed, you have to do the trick, you have to turn around, you have to repeat it, is completely amazing. Um, so I love that video, I love just the way it turned out and, and how it was. And then at the end of it, he was like, you know, I want you to cut my hair anyways. And then I was like, no, I can't do that. Well, we ended up cutting his hair anyways. So that was one moment I thought was completely awesome um, and it just really showed like Mowgli's hard work, his dedication, his persistence and his dedication to the craft of skateboarding. And I think that really, like I said, it really comes out and it shows. And the thing that I think is cool 
about being able to share those experiences with him is all of the people out there, all of you, the viewers, that see that, and then you get excited about learning the tricks yourself. I think there's something about watching another person push themselves like that, and then you going, man, if he can do 50 tricks in 13 and a half minutes, maybe I can land a kickflip. And I would love you to leave it in the comments below. What tricks did Mowgli inspire you to do? What is your favorite Mowgli moment? Another day that I thought was so cool um, was when the Happy Medium guys came. And I know that Mowgli's a big Happy Medium fan. He, he loves the videos and to just see the light in his eyes it is, we have a lot of random things happen at Braille skateboarding sometimes. And that day, somebody just happened to bring a car. And this, this person said, I am getting a new car. I'm gonna give my old car to you guys if you would please skate it. So we skated over the car, we skated the car, and Mowgli just went off. I remember um, we pulled the car back to, up to one of those ramps and Mowgli came up and he ollies onto the car and he goes to do a 50-50 and it was on the spoiler of the car and his wheel got stuck or he got stopped. So he literally is going full speed, ollies on and he just goes flying through the air, falls and slides and I'm like, bro, he is done for the day. He is out of there and he's not going to be able to skate for the rest of the day. And he, it literally didn't even phase him. He got back up, pulled the spoiler off the car, did the 50-50, and then skated for another like five or so hours, just absolutely shredding. And that's the thing I love about him. He just, he just goes, 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 goes. And he's really excited about skateboarding, about progressing. And I think it's really cool to see him, to see him do that. And I'm excited to see where he goes and where he ends up taking this. He is interested in contest skating and seeing how where he can take his skateboarding in that avenue as well which i think is very exciting uh, when we went to the do tour i remember sitting next to him and he was watching these these contest skaters and he was like dude the energy that you get with all these contest skaters is so exciting he was like i have to be a part of that some exciting news is for mowgli he's going to be part of the we'll, we'll see how We'll see how the future rolls for him, but we wish him the absolute best of luck. He's shooting for going to be part of the Mexican Olympic skateboard team, and we hope that he just goes all the way and fully, absolute crushes it and ends up in the Olympics and does just an absolutely amazing job. Do awesome, do really, really, really well. Um, I hope that the time that you spent at Braille was a good time, a happy time, and you were able to just push yourself, learn new tricks, reach new audiences, get in touch with new people, inspire new people, but then also take those experiences and take it in your own way. Be the author of your own story to push that to whatever that next thing is, whether that's gonna be the contest circuit, more video parts, whatever it is, I'm really, really excited to see what you're gonna make of it. So get out there and absolutely crush it. Whenever anybody leaves Braille skateboarding, it's always like a really tough thing. It's a hard thing to deal with. It's heart wrenching. Um, sometimes it, I just want to sit down and cry. It's, a, it's an actual loss, right? Um, so instead of just wallowing in the loss and saying, oh no, it sucks so bad. Like we're definitely going to miss having Mowgli as part of the team. He's a crucial, integral, amazing, awesome part and his smile would brighten up the day rolling through the skate park, doing a thousand tricks, 50 tricks on the flat bar, bada boom, bada bang. We're gonna miss that 100% guaranteed. Um, but rolling forward, we're just gonna have to be happy and be stoked for what Mowgli is gonna put out next. I'm really excited to see what that's gonna be. And yeah, I hope it's an amazing, incredible, awesome future for you. And I hope that the chapter that you've written in your own book that has Braille skateboarding in there is a good, awesome time for Mowgli as well. When I always think about the skateboard team, I, I try and think about how do I put this person into such a situation where they have opportunities to grow, to improve their skateboarding, and to also use that growth and their own skateboard potential growing ability to actually help other people expand in their skateboarding as well. 
So, you know, we have the warehouse, we have all these videos that we make. Um, some of the videos that I like um, that Mowgli did really, really good on was the persistence videos on the Braille Army channel. I would love to literally sit down and count up how many tricks he did. And some of those tricks that he would do were so, so hard. Tons of tricks on the hip, tons of tricks on the flat bar. Um, he did tons of tricks down the three block. And man, super, super, super amazing. Another video that comes to mind is the tricks with the Tesla. All the tricks he did over the Tesla. Super, super, super rad. I just wanted to make this video to say thank you, Mowgli. Thank you for the time being at Braille Skateboarding. And we wish you the absolute best in your journey. And we're very excited to see where that takes you. And this is not goodbye forever. This is goodbye for now. We will see you again, my friend. Keep on crushing it out there and keep on inspiring new audiences all over the world to ride their skateboard. What's your favorite Mowgli memory? Leave it in the comments below. If you're wondering why did he leave? Well, I will let Mowgli answer that question in his own words right here. You're gonna keep this raw, Mowgli. Yep, I'm leaving. Is this the end? I guess what I wanna say is I'm gonna be gone. Uh, I'm gonna be gone for I don't know how long, but I got a job somewhere else. And I think it's very important to communicate to whoever appreciates seeing me skate on this channel, Braille Army, or wherever, that I won't be here. Um, I'm taking a different route for the meantime. You know, just things are happening in my life. Uh, an opportunity came closer home, and I'm gonna be there. Uh, also, I'm skating a bunch and, uh, you know, I, I, by, I don't even want to say it because by this time this video goes up, I will have already competed in a competition. That competition is uh, for the Mexican Olympic team. I have no idea how that came out. I hope I'm in the comments below saying something like, we did kind of okay. That's my goal, you know, like I'm going up against people that probably skate comps all the time. And I haven't been in competition since probably like 2014, 15 maybe. So shh, I was talking to JD's dad. In the world of like skate competition, that's a different whole thing itself than just street skating and like park skating and like YouTube skating. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm doing a lot of things all over the place. And that's just one of those things that I wanna give a shot before I don't, I'm not able to skate the way I can. Cause like I am like 30 and maybe people don't know that and they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, this guy's 30, what? Yeah, take care of yourself. <laughs> All right, Mogli, I'm gonna reel you back in. Yes, pull me back in. I just wanted to let you do your thing for a minute. Yeah. But I'm gonna reel you back in. Mm -hmm. You're leaving. I'm you have, leaving. You have an idea for how long you're gonna be gone, but you wanna tell the people. That I'm gonna be gone. You're gonna be gone. Uh, what are you feeling? Not what are you doing, not what are you planning, not where you're going. How are you feeling? Nervous and excited. I'm nervous and excited because like it's different. It's something else that um, I didn't even know I was going to. I didn't think about that until a month ago. And now that I did, it makes a lot more sense because uh, it lines up with what I'm wanting for my future. With that being said, I know I'm like dodging the question where I'm going to work, but I just don't want to say. I just don't want to say. I'd rather y'all find out through some other ways. So all I know is in life, we have choices and we got to take them and not look back. I am looking back though at the good times. I'm going to miss everyone here. I'm going to miss Gabe Cruz telling me like, hey, you should try this. Hey, are you down to send this? <laughs> just, I know he doesn't talk like that. Like, hey, are you down to send this? <laughs> but in my mind, it's like, yeah, are you down to send this? I'm gonna miss everyone, honestly. Uh, I'm gonna miss the, the crew, Nigel, just the, the energy. <laughs> Glow, his laugh. <laughs> Uzi, and the things that he says. I'm, uh, you know, like sometimes he'd be saying a lot of things. I'm like, how? This is a skateboard. R Ricky. A That's a knife. Aaron, I'm gonna miss Aaron. You know, he's the person that brought me this opportunity where I could be here for almost four years. That's a long time. Before this, I was a security guard. And I don't think people understand uh, like 
how thankful I am. Yes, I might be uh, very just chaotic with the way I come off on camera. Like I might say things that come off rude or my jokes don't land. And it's just more of like, for me, this is just me expressing myself. And I do want to apologize to anyone that's ever felt like I've been a negative person and not positive. Like, but it's quite the opposite. I swear, I love motivating people and inspiring people. Um, whenever someone wants to land something or just doesn't have that courage, I almost feel obligated to be there to make sure someone attempts it or like gets that courage. Just, I'm leaving. But you can find me, I'm all over the internet. I don't know, you, you know where I'm at. I'll be like, you know Bakersfield. If you pass by through Bakersfield, just make sure you stop by Heritage or something. I might be there, I might not. I just don't wanna say where I'm gonna be because like, I'm still gonna be doing skating stuff. Just different scale. I wanna talk about Braille a little bit from the beginning to now. What has your experience been like? What has your relationship building with everyone been like? What has it meant to you to be a, a very prominent member of this team and, and be an inspiration for people who watch our videos and for people who are learning how to skate? Um, what is being a, a Braille team member in terms of like being in the videos? I know you're gonna be on skateboards, but in terms of being on the channel and in the videos and here filming with us, what has that meant to you and what have you learned? Well, I showed up probably around like October 15th, somewhere around there of 2019. And I didn't know what I was walking into. I just remember seeing Luke and Kelly skating down the three stair over here. And they were like on some jump thingies, like and Uzi and uh, Aaron. Those are the first four people I saw, met, interacted with. And even then it was like, everyone's just making videos. Uh, I. I had already been making YouTube videos because like I started in 2016, like January, I was like full on in. So I had already three years of like making YouTube videos and knowing how it was to be in front of a camera, but not in front of a camera with a large scale of audience. So uh, whenever I came on, I didn't know what was expected of me. I didn't know what I was like, uh, just talk more to the camera, go <laughs> do the trick. And I will say, I probably didn't talk as much as I do now to the camera or just uh, so carefree with how confident I feel. It's just different now to when I had come on then. Uh, I felt very reserved. Didn't want to feel like I was putting out too much because um, I almost was afraid of letting my persona out. And now it's like, I'm just me. You know, you're gonna meet me, you're not. I'm still the same person you see in videos or not. Like if I'm tired, you can tell. If I'm not tired, you can tell. If I'm so energetic, that's literally me. Like, oh, you get the best of me. If you ever think like, what's this guy going on? He makes no sense. That's probably one of the best versions you can get of me because I'm like really excited and probably, I don't know why, I'm just excited. Um, with the journey and what it means to be a part of like Braille. From the outside perspective, people look at Braille like either we suck at skating, uh, we're just a bunch of weirdos that just try anything on boards, constantly doing different kinds of ideas, just different wheels, different boards, different trucks, different something. But I think everyone misses by giving us just a title and not understanding that everyone contributes in their own way. And everyone here is really talented. You're just seeing us here in the park. Like, I swear, if you look us up, we all have like video parts or we've done things in skateboarding. Like before being here, which is four years ago, I literally have so much footage of me straight skateboarding in the streets. So does Nigel, so does Ricky, so does Glow, so does Uzi, so everyone like everyone, and if I miss somebody, they all have streets, even the people before me. Like I appreciate what um, the past members before I came on had done for the channel. I, I never met a lot of them, which is a bummer, but I have respect for the grind they were on, uh, what they had contributed, because it's not an easy task to come here every day and just make videos. You And I say not easy because one, either you have to challenge yourself as a skateboarder with a new trick, creative trick, 
it, you, the thought process has to continue. Uh, and, you, and you almost don't want to let down y'all. I don't want to let y'all down. I don't want to just do a 50-50 on a rail. You already know I could 50-50. So why would I do a 50-50 again? Uh, I almost feel that anything I have thought of with new tricks is I think of people as a, a reason to keep going. Not that I wouldn't, but maybe I wouldn't have gone and done this amazing trick as quick the next day. But then I think of the people, I'm like, oh, what do the people want to watch? They just want to see me skate, but I also want to do this new trick. So I'm just going to do this new trick that I would have waited a few days to try. So I appreciate semi-pressure, but it's not really pressure because no one here is telling me to do something. It's just mainly I'm telling myself because like, I'm just that person. I, I have to do it now. And then I look back like, oh, sick. If I think now, from the beginning of the year, I've probably done some of my favorite new tricks here at the Braille House that I probably would have never done in a long time. But that's because I pushed myself thinking of the viewers. Whether it's a lot of views or less views, whoever's watching, I want someone to be inspired and motivated. What is the mark that you hope you left on this Braille skateboarding channel? So fun. <laughs> I, I honestly, the mark, I just hope people, whenever they see anything associated with me and Braille is that I was just here having fun. And like, if it ever looks stressful, just know I was just challenging myself. I stressed myself out. There wasn't any, anyone, nobody was stressing me out. It was probably me trying to figure out how do I do this? That's the only, like, you know, your first kickflip might be stressful too. You're over here trying to figure out how to put your foot back. You're over here trying to figure out how to flip it and keep it straight. So it's just, sometimes we pressurize ourselves and that's what I'm saying. My only hopes are that when people think of me in this beautiful warehouse is that I was just doing my best and I was doing my best and going better as much as possible. Man, it's, 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 it's pretty intense because like, I would have never thought of Mexican Olympics and, and I'll, I'll get into this slowly. The thought of like doing anything with skateboarding Olympics has been such a slow rise for me. And this is like me just saying this because like, I don't even know the journey yet. This is just me hitting on like baby steps. I'm barely gonna go compete. And like I said, by the time this video is out, who knows what I got. I probably got 20th place or something. I don't know. I hope in, in that nationality for Mexico, not America. I was going to try a USA team back in November of 2022, but I got sick and I couldn't go film my line. So now <laughs> there's another option and I'm going with the nationality of Mexico because both my parents are Mexican and I'm first generation American Mexican. So let's go. But what I was going to say is learning about the Olympics was through Braille because Andy Anderson was here, Will Cortez was here, and I was exposed to that's a thing. I know I had heard about Mexican Olympic teams, but I didn't know it was so tangible with like people I know being close and I could t ask them questions. And then it all f came back with uh, JD's dad telling me, hey, you should compete more. Why aren't you competing? Uh, Will Cortez hit me up this year, 2023. He's like, hey, do you have your passport? Do you, are, are you a cit uh, Mexican citizen? And I was just thinking like, uh, no. He's like, well, if you can get it before such dates, you can enter and compete and see where you rank. And that, uh, through that process, I got all the things I need. And now I'm on my way. In two weeks, I'll be uh, competing, so. <laughs> there we are. That's, uh, you kind of get a gist of what I'm saying. Basically, I'm just in love with skateboarding. It's probably been the best thing in my life that has ever just allowed me to truly be myself. Because through skateboarding, I've learned so much. Being uh, persistent, my dedication has risen. I've always stayed focused on my goal. And just I've met so much amazing people. I do want to thank Nigel Alexander because without NKA, I wouldn't be here. He is truly the reason. He's connected me to this place here, to all these amazing people. It's just beautiful where five years ago, I was like doing graveyard shifts, just wishing like, dang, I wish I could just make videos and just skate. 
and then boom, I'm here. Crazy. Uh, sometimes I like get very emotional because it's hard times. Uh, I don't know if people know, I have a kid and I actually was seeing him less than what I do now. I was hanging out with him less than what I do now. And it's just so hard as a parent to not see your own kid. And I'm pretty sure a lot of parents could relate to that. And nowadays it's different. I get to hang out with him. He, we talk and it's just the communication is there because he's grown, he's eight now. So compared to him being a three-year-old, two-year-old that couldn't understand what I was trying to communicate maybe, now he understands where I'm at and uh, he understands what I do. It makes it a lot easier, but yes, I'm gonna be gone. And I hope that anybody that supports me, and that could just mean like support me in watching me or knowing who I am. I hope y'all have understood that I have only been here because I love skateboarding. Not once have I been here and been like, dude, I'm so bored. If I get bored when I'm here, I literally just stand up and start writing my board or I'm trying to like look through my list. What tricks should I think of next? I'm like constantly, it's all about skateboarding for me. Like it really is like I've told this to somebody and I don't know how people have taken it or like I don't know how that person took it when I said everything in my life has been based around how can I skateboard within this week? How, how can I go skateboard? Like I'll give you an idea. Let's say I'm working a nine to five. Okay, cool. The reason I chose a graveyard shift was because when I sleep, I'll wake up maybe around 1 p.m. That means I have the whole day to still skate. And if it, daylight savings hits, 5 p.m. gets dark. Sick, I still got three hours to skate. And I could still go to sleep and then get ready for work for the graveyard shift. So that's just one example. If I have my kid, all right, how can I take him to the park and let him know that I'm gonna be here for 20 minutes at least. 20 minutes does wonders for a person. We just communicate that. So I've always based my life around skateboarding. How can I keep skating? Even with this job, how can I keep skating and still make a living, you know? Like just Burrell has, has given me the opportunity to skate as a job plus outside of work, continue skating. So I don't know how much cooler it got than that. Just saying. And last but not least, uh, clearly you're going into some uncharted territory, making a big step for your life. What do you have to say for some people that are kind of in the midst of their own progressive journey and, and they maybe need uh, some words of encouragement to take that leap of faith? I have always kind of followed my own intuition, which if I feel like I should stay, I should stay. If I feel like there's a thing I want, but it, I don't know how to get there, I constantly find ways to, with research, connections, to see what the words of advice are from others, if this makes sense or if it doesn't. I feel like to grow as an individual, you have to make choices that are unknown because like Braille was unknown. I, I drive here from Bakersfield and it's like, well, why would you drive from Bakersfield to do your job? that's in the Bay Area. One, I love it. It's, it's either this or I'm just kicking people out as a security guard, which that's not my ideal life. I don't wanna tell someone, hey, you can't be here. Hey, sir, you can't be here. Yo, yo, you gotta go. I don't wanna do that. I'd rather sit in the car, listen to podcast music or ha have a phone call for those four hours to get to work versus that, which seems a lot less stressful, but it's just what I think is easier for me. I would just say, weigh out your options, believe in yourself, one. That's the biggest one. You do want to believe in yourself and know that it can happen if you just don't stop. You just got to be consistent and keep your eye on that prize and know that it might not even happen the way you want it to happen. You can do it for sure. Literally, you can. It's all in your power. We all have choices. And this is my choice. Like, I, I don't want to leave, but also I do want to see what's next. And if I don't start walking now towards the next step, I might regret it. And, I, and I'm not saying that I won't regret leaving here. 
there is, is just no regrets because I've made so much memories and so much friends through here. Yeah, I love you all. Just know I'll be back. You'll be seeing me here and there. <laughs> <laughs>